Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning how to upload your Python application to run it online and you want to learn to do that from a beginner's perspective quickly and easily, stay tuned. I'm covering the basics of how to do that in today's video and we will be doing this completely free. So before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so jumping straight in, the actual hosting of this is free, but if you have any costs for your app, such as APIs, etc., those will still be incurred. And we are using a free tier of Python Anywhere to host this. I've seen some other videos that leave me a little bit confused because they don't work for my application. So for today's video, we're going to be using this application. So you'll see when I ask it, what is the key? It's a chat bot that searches some documents and it's running online currently. Now, another thing to note, if you want to learn how to build this, I actually have another video on that, which I will link in the description. But right now we have it that you can see we can run it on Replit, which is an IDE online. And we're going to run this basically just on our own website. You can pay for your own domain if you want, and you can pay for more resource since this is going to be a basic version. So let's just go ahead and walk through how to get this set up. So first things first, we're going to go to pythonanywhere.com. Now I'm going to delete everything so that we're starting from the really the same starting point. So we're gonna click delete and yes. And then you'll see we have no web apps and this should look very similar to your setup. One other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click delete in the two directories that I've already made because I don't want you to be confused seeing things that aren't on your screen. So. The interface could change over time. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna act like we just signed up for Python Anywhere and I haven't typed in a credit card. And we're going to go ahead and start with our first project. So as you're scrolling through, you can familiarize yourself with these different tabs, but I'm just going to go to web and you'll see we have no apps. So we can click add web app and click next. Now for the purpose of this video, we have a Flask app. Now my app is not a Flask app and I'm gonna show you why that part's important. So we're going to go through and just choose the most recent version of Python. You can click your options here if you wanna rename it, but I'm gonna use everything with the default right now. Now, just to show that these changes are actually at, like changing in real time, when we click refresh and continue, you'll see that this URL no longer works because we've changed it. So this is our URL. If we click open in new tab, you'll see it now says hello from Flask. So <clears throat> if we wanted to, we could go to files. And when you go to my site, this is where your app is currently. If we click it, we can change the name of the app here. So for example, we could say it worked. And we can click save. Now one important thing to note is this won't change anything here. What you'll have to do is go to your web tab and click reload. Once you do this, it will refresh based on the files and changes that you've made. So when we click open a new tab, you'll see it now says it worked. Now the tricky part for this is you can't just upload or replace all the content of the file that we just updated with your information because it doesn't work in every situation. So I'll walk through why and why we chose this Flask option. So when we go back to files, you'll see we have our files here. So these are our directories, similar to what you would have on your computer. Your goal is going to be to match the directories with what you have on your computer. So for example, I know that I need a documents folder with a new one and new two, and then my Python file. So I'm going to go to my site because that's the directory when we first set up the new web app, that's where we put this and we had the option to name it. And then I'm gonna add a new directory here. I'm gonna call it documents <clears throat> because that's what our app needs. So we'll click new directory. And then in this directory, I'm gonna upload my two text files. You'll see they should be here, but I've deleted them. So we'll go grab those very, very quickly. I'll just right click and download, options, download. And now we can click upload file. And then I like to give it a second because last time I may have just been moving too quickly, but when I clicked upload, it didn't look like it actually stayed when I moved and went back in. 
So we'll go back in just to make sure everything's there. You'll see we have those files. So we have the documents and now we need to update our app. But the problem is if we try to run this app right now by updating this file, it's going to give us errors because it's not a Flask application. So what I've done is I've taken the code for this and I've pasted it into chat GPT and said, rewrite this so it could be run in Flask on pythonanywhere.com. This way, it ensures that our app is basically converted. This may not work for every application, but it was something that worked for me as a beginner in Python. So you'll see we get this quick note, which basically says, okay, here it is in Flask. So we're gonna click copy code and we're gonna go over here and we are now in that file and we're just gonna hit Control A, Control V. Now, one quick thing to note is we do need our API key. You'll see that note is right here. So we can go to our API key over here. Now, when you're doing this and making your file and doing all of this work, make sure that you understand that this video is for educational purposes only, and make sure that you're handling any and all, or you're following any and all applicable laws, rules, regulations, and guidelines when you're managing data, access, and all of this. So we're going to type in some random letters and create our chat GPT key. And we're gonna come over here and paste it in and click save. Now, this is still not going to run just yet, but we are really, really close. So you'll see now when we go to our files tab, we now have our application and everything else set up. The last thing that we need is a templates folder and we're going to add in this index HTML file, which basically creates the interface. So we will now go into my site and you'll see we have the directory we created earlier. We're just gonna create one more called templates and click new directory. Give it a second to load and drop us in that directory. And another option, instead of creating the file and uploading it, is we can actually make it in Python anywhere. So we'll type in index.html, we'll paste in the code that ChatGPT provided and click save. And now we should have everything that we need to get this up and running again. So to show once more that we're doing this in real time, we're going to click open a new tab and you'll see we're still using the old code. So we're going to click reload. We'll close this tab and wait on this new option to pop up. Now, when we right click and click open a new tab, we have a chat bot and we have the ability to ask it questions. So in this case, I'll say, what is the key? Ask, and you'll see we get an internal server error. So <clears throat> this can happen for a few different reasons, just kind of depending on what exactly is going on with your application. So in this case, we'll need to make sure that we have the correct API key and the correct content set up for this app. Also, I've noticed if you try to run it when you're doing too many requests or if you're having any particular issues with this reload option here, it can also produce this error. So we can wait for it to reload and we'll test it one more time. And then we will see if there is anything else that we need to do. So we'll type in what is the key and you'll see we're still getting this error. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our files section, and then we're gonna go to my site, and you'll see one final thing here. So you'll see we have our app name, so we can highlight it and click copy, because the last thing that we did, and this is something that confuses me a bit about Python Anywhere, we haven't changed the location of the file, but for whatever reason, since we've changed the content, we have to change the location of the source code. So when we go to web and we scroll down, you'll see we have the source code here. All we need to do is add in a slash and then the name of the file and hit yes. I know this seems a little bit odd because that file hasn't been moved, but it is still something that needs to be done. So you can click that and click reload. And this is going to be the basically just the location to your source code and then your working directory. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these files here in this code section are up to date. Once this has been done, we can click open a new tab. And now when we say, what is the key? Ask, 
you'll see that we are still getting that server error. All right, so in this case, it's a relatively simple fix. So you'll see I have it working, but I'll show you what I did. So if we were to type in anything here, we get this internal server error. Now, typically when I've seen that, it means that either the source code directory or the working directory is not correct. But one other thing to note is if you have any other issues, one thing that you can do is go to my site, open your app, and then click run very quickly. This will prepare the environment and basically just show that it works or can work. In this case, there's not really anything that I'm trying to accomplish here, but it is something that you can try. And basically, like I said, just kind of warm things up. Now, what we're gonna do here is go to web because I noticed the working directory is not correct. So you'll see we have our source code here, but our working directory is missing one thing and that is slash my site. Now, what this is doing is saying, here's the source code, but here's all the files for whatever this application is. So when we do that, we'll click reload. And at this point, I wanna make sure that I note one crucial thing. This site will be set to be disabled typically three months from the date that you're actually clicking this button. Now, this could change at any point, I'm sure, but the point here is this is a free service. So they're not just gonna keep everything up and running and hosted. This helps to cut their costs a bit. So the idea here is you need to log in every three months or earlier actually to click this button again to make sure that this date updates. Otherwise your app will become inactive. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this and we will open this one more time. You'll see we have our bot and we'll say, what is the key? Ask. And now we get the key is one, two, three, four. And we know that this is correct because when we go to files, my site documents in new text one, we have the key is one, two, three, four. So let's try to ask it something from new two. So we'll say, what is the awesome? And it says four, five, six, seven, which is what's up top here. So at this point, this is working. I'm gonna try to make a separate video on how to integrate this as an iframe on a different website. So it's not going to be like a production ready option, but it's just an example to show using this as a prototype over the top of your website, whatever that may be. But at the very least, you now know how to host your Python application online in a relatively straightforward way. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.